Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. Welcome to Always the Same Blue Sky. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Anime Man, what is this? We don't know what this is. Never seen it before. Well, um, the story goes that I got an email a couple of days ago from a person called Crimson Sky. Uh, Grand Wild, I think is his real name. And uh, he asked me to play... He, well, he saw my uh, playthrough of uh, Clement, the visual novel, and uh, he said, Well, I've actually made a visual novel before as well, but I haven't got enough exposure, so if I give you a free copy of this game, would you mind reviewing it for me? And I said, Of course, I would love to. And so here we are. And now, hearing that it was an indie project visual novel, I've never actually heard of an indie project being turning into a visual novel, or a visual novel being an indie project. So I thought, okay, this this looks interesting, and I opened this, you know, first menu screen. I was like, whoa, this is legit. This is actually this this is actually really beautiful already. It's already captured me. That soundtrack. No, you can't hear it anymore. <laughs> but the artwork as well, and the soundtrack is just wow. It's already looking interesting. So guys, um. I think what we're going to do as well is that there's a link in the description below and I'll leave a link at the end of the video where you guys can actually purchase this game. It is really cheap, um, I think it's like $2.50, no, £2.50, I'm not too sure what that is, how much that is, but either way it's really, it's dirt cheap. And um, I'm going to pretty much show you the majority of the Let's Play, but not the entire thing. So if you guys want to see the rest of the gameplay, then go into the link in the description below and uh, click on the link and just purchase the game. It's really cheap and uh, yeah. I, anyway, uh, I'm sure it's a little bit too early to judge at the moment. So let's go straight into it. Start the journey. Oh my god, that is really fucking beautiful. I leant over the immaculate red rail of the ferry and stared into the inviting Mediterranean Sea. The combined effort of the br gentle breeze and wake from the ferry gave the impression that the sea was sheltered in silk. The precious fabric was a rich shade of turquoise, which transformed the glaring sun into a thousand stars. Mesmerized, lost in the abyss, I had an overwhelming desire to obtain one of those elusive glimmers of light. After only minutes, the desire developed into an unhealthy need that I couldn't overcome. I dutifully answered my possessor's siren call by deftly diving into the, its mysterious depths. The cool water felt divine again. My mortal skin, as it washed away the heat, I seemed to fall forever. It was in that euphoric dream, deep blue world, that I caught a glimpse of her. Holy fucking shit, this is amazing. Like a jellyfish, she fluttered submissively in the water, with no obvious aim, no purpose. Her hair and elaborate garments danced around her in the water, as if trying to coax her into life. It worked, although she remained unmoving. She acknowledged my presence with a smile. I smiled back, and she reached out towards my eyes. I instantly felt her every muscle in my body relax. As she did this, her hair rapidly darkened, the sea green tint amplified, along with the shimmer of the distant sun through the water. I wonder if this was the result of her using magic, or merely the depletion of my sanity. Her glistening hair became more prominent as my vision blurred. It provided a strong sense of warmth and comfort as my consciousness ebbed away. Holy crap! This is... Whoa! This is fucking good! So far. <laughs> Guys, artwork and that soundtrack is freaking awesome. I awoke sharply, upright and panting heavily. I allowed a few seconds for reality to register. Pretty intense dream, I muttered, trying to speed up the process. I guess the last few days have been pretty full on. I collapsed back down and took a minute to break to take in my new beachside apartment. It felt alien. My eyes watered as I attempted to look past the bright light coming through my window to see what was going on outside. Bright light? Damn it. I leapt out of the bed and rooted frantically through the open suitcase on the floor. Mother Christmas! 9.21 already! College starts in 9 minutes! The alarm must have been muffled. I grabbed my toothbrush and headed to the bathroom, stretching a little on the way. I didn't need to turn on the light as there was already an as there was already ample, which felt bizarre as it had been snowing when I left England. 
I recall that the half-human creature that greeted me in the mirror, which I unfortunately didn't have enough time to fully tame. <laughs> I love, I love this script. It's, it's awesome. As I brushed my teeth, I saw the familiar bottle of pills, one of the few constants in my life, out of the corner of my eye, and it dawned on me that the last few days had been a bit of a blur. I took an extra tablet to compensate. I was more than used to moving around, though, so I knew I'd snap out of it. I scouted the room as I hurriedly got dressed, throwing everything I laid my eyes on into my bag before leaking it into the spread hope I wouldn't be more than 10 minutes late. It took me an extra 5 minutes to find classroom C 2C, as the instructions on the map were nowhere near as straightforward as they made themselves out to be. I ended up being about 20 minutes late. The teacher was not impressed. I apologized and awkwardly introduced myself to the teacher, whilst I felt the coldness of 40, old pairs of 40 odd pairs of eyes attempting to glare into the back of my soul. She cut my explanation short, agitatedly told me to take a seat, and without pause, continue with the lecture. I turned around to face my new classmates, their impressions now ranging from boredom to disinterest. All apart from one. Holy shit, she is fucking cute. Whoa. I snapped out of autopilot as I hit unexpected turbulence, but my hands missed the controls and I was less stunned. I fucking love this script, it's so cool! She was without a doubt the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen, flawlessly proportioned, with an almost porcelain face, completely free of any imperfections. Although untanned, the colours in her hair gave the impression she had spent a lifetime bathing in the sun. Full of death, it appeared radiant in the bright light that flooded through the window behind her. It provided the perfect frame for her piercing apple green eyes, which penetrated through all pre pretense. Wait, pretense? Pretense? Something like that. She had, uncon she had uncontested access to my very core. Although I felt exposed, I did not feel intimidated as a warm smile amongst all the dirty lo looks and sneering comforted me. Pox. I came crashing back down to reality as I realized I'd been standing there gormlessly for a lot longer than could be considered socially appropriate. I felt my face flush as I sheeply took my place in the last seat remain last remaining seat, which was, guess where? Right next to her, of course. Terrific. I spent the rest of the day trying to avoid eye contact with her. Okay, good job, class. I expect to see you promptly tomorrow, the teacher said glaring at me once again. Hi, I'm Kira. It's a pleasure to meet you. She pushed her hair behind her ear, revealing the full extent of her smile. Her full attention was focused on me, and this caught me completely off guard. As a, re as a result, I forgot how to be human. Are you new? Still nothing. I haven't seen you around before, but then again, I've only been here a few times myself. Holy fuck, she blinks! That's different from Kleinite, it's just a still picture. My brain slowly started to click back into life. I decided to start with my name. So I spelled out each letter in my hand and presented it and pressed enter in fear. <laughs> that is cool! That is a cool feature! Um, <laughs> there's a bit of a breaking the fourth wall there. Alright, cool. Let's go, Joey. Joey. I squeaked. Oh, Joey! <laughs> I squeaked. Excited that I had finally figured out the correct response to an introduction, I cleared my throat. Sorry, I mean, my name's Joey, and yeah, I'm new here, so it's very nice to meet you. I gave her a slight nod and clumsily shook her outstretched hand while she smiled encouragingly. I felt my embarrassment alleviate a little as my brain reconnected. I just arrived here yesterday afternoon, in fact. That's why I'm not really with it at the moment. The move was pretty late. The move was pretty last minute. I was lucky to find an international school with such a remote place in such a remote place really. I smiled awkwardly, realizing that I was waffling. I guess you weren't from around here. You're from England, right? I was shocked. How did you know that? Your accent. But I've got an Australian accent. <laughs> Joking. Kira said Kira said chuckling a little at my expression. Great, glad things are picking up, I thought sarcastically, trying to stop myself grinning. I tried to work out where she was from so that I could provide her with a half-decent response, but I was baffled. It was obvious she wasn't a local. Even though I had lived in what seemed like very, like every nook and cranny of the globe, I had never encountered an accent like hers before. Not that it didn't, com didn't complement her, her perfectly. I had no chance but to succumb. I'm sorry, but I can't work out where you're from. I don't think I've ever heard an accent like yours before. That doesn't surprise me. I think I'll keep you guessing. I felt my heart thump. What was this girl doing to me? I just heard that bump. That was cool. So hey, would you like someone to show you around? Well, the places I've discovered so far, anyway. Yeah, that'd be great if you're if you're sure you won't you don't mind. 
She smiled sincerely. No. Sure, I'd love to. With that, she turned, her, turned and led the way out of the classroom. Our peers parted as she walked purposely towards the exit. <laughs> she just flew away. I was starting to wonder where the hell she was taking me after following her through random side roads and dark alleys for what must have been at least half an hour. That... Guys, this art is fucking amazing. Like, it's really hard to believe this is an indie project. She would stop occasionally when she was comforted, confronted with more than one path, her gaze flicking wildly between them, before confidently strolling down the one that seemed to lead closest to our point of origin. It was this couple, it was this, couple with the signpost we had passed four times previously that led me to believe that we were going around in circles. I left her to it though, as I didn't mind where we were, I was enjoying her company. <laughs> she ain't happy. I could have sworn it was this way, Kira said agitatedly, as if accusing the streets of rearranging overnight. How long have you lived here again? I asked, tongue in cheek. Only a few months. She stared, hopefully. <coughs> oh, fuck. <coughs> long enough to know. She finished defeated. What are the people here like then? Island mentality and all that. They're friendly enough, but a little one dimensional. Outsiders usually have more substance. I was unsure how to take this, but didn't have time to contemplate as Kira had cut herself off with a sharp look to the right. <laughs> You know what, I'm sure this is where I lost my bracelet the other week. Kira's feet followed her gaze diligently down the side street, her eyes focusing on different points as she described it to me. It's only extravagant, just a chain with shells attached really, but it means a lot to me, you know. Oh, no, you don't have to, she exclaimed as I knelt down to look through a small gap. Don't worry about it, and I was entirely sincere. I know it sounds odd, especially for me, but seeing this girl I barely knew upset stirred something in me. That means you're in... I mean, that means you like her. That means you're in. Whatever. We searched th as thoroughly as we could, but to no avail. I could tell Kira was disappointed, but she seemed a little cheery, and I was happy to having have contributed. The conversation now seemed to flow more freely as we continued toward our goal. So here we are then. Kira said, turning suddenly at the end of an alley. Our faces were only inches apart. Her relaxed, soothing breath caressed my face. I was too on edge to breathe myself. The town center. As she said that she leant to one side, exclaiming her by expression. I felt the light as she had been guarding hit my face. I was greeted with bustling, charming, pretty town center. Modern yet quaint. She giggled and I realized she had expected my slightly stunned reaction. I love it here. There's always a really good atmosphere. Would you like to see some of my favorite stores? Yeah, sure. I said, smiling at her enthusiasm. Great, because I have impeccable taste. She tapped my nose before she turned around to leave. Tap my nose. <laughs> the side street came out roughly halfway up the steep hill on which the town was situated. I squinted as we were bathed in warm sunlight, which was intensified by the large number of glass shops. I must be part magpie as I was entirely seduced and the constant cool sea breeze allowed time to take it all in. The parts of the buildings which weren't constructed of glass had a very traditional, almost ceramic quality to it. Fuck this art, man. I really want to know who drew this. Kira's pace had mellowed quite drastically from the one I had become accustomed to, which only served to excuse me, which only served to heighten the relaxing air the town already secreted. We casually meandered, with Kira stopping and explaining why she liked one quirky shop after the next. Before Bakery was established almost 150 years ago, it quickly became famous for its fruit cupcakes. I spent way too much time here. Colin. All the clothes here are imported from France. The shop's always full, but no one ever buys anything. I actually have no idea what this shop is. <laughs> that's kind of new. I can only recall actually going into two stores, but even that seemed excessive as Kira had given me a detailed overview of their contents and history beforehand. Some of them seemed far too dramatic or unrealistic to actually be believable, such as the story behind a favorite shop which sold exquisite glassware. Apparently the shopkeeper's husband had gone out to sea during a ferocious storm one night and never returned. Every morning the window with the widow took a glass lamp to the shore, faithfully awaited her husband's return, but always left disappeared. Until exactly three months ago his disappearance, when was when, when an exquisite golden glass starfish washed up by her feet. There it is. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. She took this as a message from her husband and, and as inspiration to learn the craft. She opened a humble store hoping that he would one day hear one day hear tell of it and return to her. I guess it's just a happy coincidence that she seemed to be doing pretty damn well out of it as there was quite a few people gathered outside, which is unsurprising really as the shop itself stood out a mile over its competitors.
Even though the sun was beginning to set, the shop still sparkled wildly. That is really fucking cool. I'm not gonna stop commenting on this art, guys, because look at it. This is not indie project level. This is like, this is pro level. Fuck. The front display was filled to the brim with colored glass which seemed intent on conquering the full spectrum. It was, really was mesmerizing. This is my favorite piece. Curious said breaking the spell cast by pointing at a dazzling glass dolphin jumping out of a green colored sea. That one? <laughs> she was leaning in, fixated on it. Her face didn't show it, but I'm sure I saw a shade of sadness in her eyes. She turned to face me, smiling warmly. Do you like milkshakes? Mind reader, a milkshake is exactly what I need to help me deal with this hot heat. Let's do it. As it was only a few minutes to closing time, there was only one table still set up. Luckily, it gave us a spectacular view of the sun, setting sun over the rolling tide. Curious seemed quietly thrilled with her rocky, rocky road milkshake, which looked bigger than her head. She dived in pretty much as soon as we sat down and drank the whole thing in around 30 seconds. I started to, comp to compete with her after she'd taken a couple of glugs, but it didn't go very well as brain freeze quickly set in. You'll need more practice, I'm afraid. I try and come here most days if I can. It seems to make the school day pass quicker. Here, I saved you a bit. I still had brain freeze, but soldiered through as not to lose face. Really good, isn't it? Kira looked out to sea, pausing for a minute. I could sit here all day watching the sea. A lot of people would find that a mundane, but they wouldn't if they focused on the right things. She blinked as a breeze caught her hair. It whistled slightly as it travelled through her, the discordant buildings and past us. Her eyes followed it and lingered in the direction it left, and without turning back to face me, she said in a half-whispered tone, I should go. She leant over, kissed me on the cheek and left. Her hair swayed as she disappeared into the distance. Jeez, that escalated quickly! <laughs> God, that was quick, you're already in. Wow, I wish life was that easy, eh? I decided to go back into town as I had seen something that caught my eye. And the main character's like, eh! D didn't even phase him. <laughs> I'd been moved, I'd been moved around my whole life, barely spending more than a few months in one school. People usually react to this fact with pity, not necessarily expressing it vocally, but it's there, in their eyes. This has always made little sense to me, though. I know no different, it's all I've ever known, it's my life. School has always been a place of purpose to me. I'm naturally inquisitive and have a strong desire to widen my pool of knowledge. That's why I've always secured a place in the local school before agreeing to relocate. For the first time I can remember, the school had become more than a place of learning for me, and for once I was eager to stay put. Then again, it's hard not to be charmed by the place. The school is situated on the end of a peninsula, and no matter where you are, you can hear the constant lapping, lapping of the docile waves on the beach not far below. The teachers and pupils work much in the same way as any other school I've attended, yet it is all sh sheathed in the comforting, aquiescent atmosphere. I've been attending for a few weeks and build up some acquaintances in the purpose, in the process, purpose, which helped the days pass quicker, but the one person there I really cared about seemed distant. Every day Kira would wish me a cheerful good morning without fail, and we spend most of our time after school together. Just last night we went crab fishing in fact, sat at the end of the harbour we, talk we talked until the sun went down. And for some reason, whenever I caught her eye in the classroom, she always looked away. Kira had been acting weird all day. She was usually so cheerful and full of life, but today she almost seemed absent. She had been looking out the window, fiddling with her pen, all lesson, which is why it came as no surprise when she got up and walked out towards the end. I tried to ignore this and concentrate on what the teacher was saying. Poseidon's great temple resided in Atlantis, so when Atlantis was destroyed, Poseidon left this planet and... What was on Kira's mind? I was making her unhappy. Maybe she had family problems. Something I was too familiar with. I couldn't recall her ever mentioning her family before. It seemed like a waste of time sitting there wondering what was happening instead of just asking her. As Kira had done a few minutes before, I left the room without a word. I had a feeling I knew where Kira would be. I found Kira sat on a collection of large, dark, uneven rocks, which were located on the end of the peninsula beneath the school. They were only accessible at the very limited period each day, and weren't easy to reach. But your reward was privacy and a chance to escape the school above, which was out of view due to the rocky area being a little indented into the land. Kira was sat watching the sea massage everything around her, small amounts of spray occasionally spitting over her feet. The sky was grey and it looked like a storm could be coming, but it wasn't too cold yet. She briefly looked up and smiled at me, acknowledging my presence as I sat on the rock next to her. I rolled up the bottom of my trousers with my knees pulled towards me, resting my head on, the fold, on my folded arms, watching the struggling water with her. Even though nothing had been resolved, my head quickly cleared 
sitting there. After a few minutes, Kira softly said, I didn't know you had a tattoo. I like it. What's wrong, Kira? It's a giant squid, isn't it? This caught me off guard. Most people think it's a regular squid. I'm impressed you know the difference. She looked taken back. aback. It's obvious from the shape of the caudal fin and of course its eyes. Kira, what's wrong? I repeated. She said nothing for a minute. Is it acceptable to be selfish? People are inherently selfish, so therefore, is it fair to be annoyed by selfish behaviour? I took a minute myself. Just because someone gravitates more easily towards a certain behaviour doesn't make it right. But it's not as simple as that. For example, the only reason you're here now looking out for me is in the hope that I'd do the same for you. If I said right now that I care nothing for you and I'll never speak to you again, would you still be here? Her tone was emotionless. I took something out of my pocket before I answered. Yes. I said placing the bracelet I had bought that first day in her hand. This is to say thank you for showing me around and making me feel welcome. I got up to leave. Kira grabbed my hand, so I turned around to me and met her eyes. They were full of sincerity. I believe you. I took her other hand and hoisted her up. If we head back now, we can make the next class. She smiled warmly, but for some reason, it just incited pity. She didn't let go of my hand until we reached the school. Alright, I think we'll end this episode here. Uh, okay, save's down there. Cool. Quick save completed. Awesome. Okay, okay. So right click to go back to the last scene. Okay, cool. Anyways, uh, that's it for the first episode of Always the Same Blue Sky. Wow, all I can say is that this is this is fucking impressive. This is very, very impressive. I'm I am genuinely I'm surprised at how good this is. Soundtrack is awesome, artwork is awesome, story is pretty good so far. And but yeah, you know you know what they say about visual novels. It's only just getting started. But anyways guys, if you go down to the link which is in the description below, um, and you go to the purchase screen, you should say there, there is like an optional kind of code thing, or like a present code. And just for you guys who have watched this video, if you type in there, Anime Man, that's also in the description below, into that code, type in Anime Man, you get a discount. Yep, yeah, just, just for you guys who watch, sat around and watched this video, you guys get a discount on this game. So uh, please, if you enjoyed this playthrough, I mean, I'm going to keep going, but, you know, I'm not going to play the entire game. So if you guys want to play the entire game and you want to support this uh, this game, and I really, you know, I, I want you guys to support this game because this is a fucking awesome game. Please, go down to the link below, type in Anime Man if you want the discount, or not, you know, you can just buy the game full price. You know, that would probably be better because, uh, yeah, it's cheap either way. It's really dirt cheap, and so far this is pretty fucking worth it. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, look forward to the next episode of this. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. As always, like and favorite if you enjoyed, subscribe for my anime banter, and I'll see you in the next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime. Ciao, This was my favorite. So, uh, here we go. Stop. <laughs> look at this, guys. Majestic as fuck.